how to set up your Webull chart, that's what I wanna cover in this video. First off, I'm not saying that you have to set up your chart exactly like I do. That's not the point here. I will give you some indicators that I suggest starting with as a beginner that you can use as a foundation to build from and get more advanced, but that's not what I'm trying to convey. The main thing that I'm trying to convey is talking to the brand new people that don't even know how to set up a chart. How do you add an indicator? Where do you find these indicators? Those are the types of questions that I'll be addressing here. Now, maybe you're somebody that doesn't even have a charting platform yet, but you've decided that you do want to use charts and you want to be a technical trader, but now you're looking for an actual platform. So I'll cover that here too, but let's go to my desktop and I'll walk you through how to set up your chart. First off, real quick, for those people that do not have a platform, I would certainly rec recommend Webull because it costs nothing, it's free, and they actually pay you to sign up. In fact, they're always running promotions. So this is the current promotion that they have. It may be different by the time you watch this, but they're giving away free stocks, and it's very quite simple. All you gotta do is register an open account, and then you have to deposit $100. Real quick on that, the $100 can be used to invest or trade a stock with. So it's not like you're paying for it, you just have to put money into your account, and then from there you can use that to, like I said, go out and buy a stock or crypto or whatever you're looking to do. Now what we're looking at here is a platform itself, but I realize this doesn't get very overwhelming in a hurry. So what we'll do is come down here to customize, and then we're just focused on the chart. So over here you can see add widgets, click on that, come over here to the chart, and now we have our chart. And let's just make this extra big so you can, as you can see, drag the cursor down here and you can make this as big as you want. So we'll do that and make it a good solid size here. Now the first thing that you're gonna wanna make sure that I would recommend is let's use candlestick charts. Am I saying that candlesticks are a holy grail? I'm not, but it is something that I find very valuable. So let's make sure that that is what's gonna be set. And it is the default, but if something ever changes, you never know, uh, then you'd wanna come over here and you can see line style. So you click on that, and over here, you now have a bunch of different choices where you can see candle, hollow candle, baseline, and bar. And so you get a bunch of different choices, but so let's just go over here to bar. So right here, I've now changed this to uh, a different type of analysis method. But like I said, I would recommend candles. So again, come over here and just click on candle, and right there, you have your candle sticks. Now, as far as just the overall look of everything, that's where you can come here and click on chart settings. And I'm not gonna go through each and every one because I'm gonna give you the credit, or give you the benefit of the doubt that you know how to read and go through all this. But you can see right here that there are a bunch of different choices. So for example, maybe you wanna have some floating information on. So when I click that, notice right here. So which each candle, it's giving you all the information which each one, again, is that a must? That it's completely up to you. Uh, but so that's floating, fixed, or just turn it off. So I'll turn it off and you can see now it's just back to a normal crosshair. So like I said, right click down to chart settings, and then you can see all the various uh, you know, uh, options that you have. And in many cases, it's just as easy as you know, experimenting. So you know, click in there, click in you know, off, and you can see that things change around. So if you look, watch that price right there, watch what happens when I click on that, notice how it disappears. But if you want that back right there, it appears. So I mean, like I said, it just, a lot of it is with experimentation. And then you can go as far as you know, all these different trade things, but like I said, you also don't want to get yourself too overwhelmed. You want to keep it, you know, somewhat basic. So there is where you're going to find your settings and all that. And we've established that we want to use candlesticks. But now what about indicators? How are indicators going to actually work here? So first thing is if there is an indicator that you don't want to use. So right here, they just threw this moving average on here. So I'm going to click on that. Right click on it and there we go. You can see the different choices, hide, delete, or the settings of it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that out and now you can see that we have that indicator and we have completely uh, a fresh palette. Now there's a couple things that like I said, from a foundation standpoint, you're gonna want. We've already talked about candlesticks, but another default is gonna be down here. You wanna have volume on your chart, but you can see right here, volume is also a default. Uh, but if it does, if it's not, then you can go go and add it, but I, I can say, and it's always been this we been this way with Webull. Volume has always been a default, but nonetheless, those are like I said, some of the foundational indicators that I would recommend using that you can build from. But another one is let's add in some other indicators. So you come up here, and I should also note that when you just drag the cursor over each thing, you can see it tells you what it is. So from that angle, it starts to become more self plan uh, self explanatory. But right here, you can see indicators, and if we want to add indicators, well, let's click on that. And up here right away, you can see that there's indicators that they automatically give you. But then if you click on that, you can see 
that there are a whole lot more of indicators. Now, some of these, I have no idea what they are. So please don't think that you need to learn what each and every one of these are and that you need to use each and every one of these. Now, I'm not saying that that means that some of these are worthless. I'm just saying that I don't know what all these are, how they work. Uh, but it, the, the, my point here is that they do offer you many different choices. But in the spirit of keeping things simple, let's first throw on the VWAP. One of my favorite indicators, so that is the volume weighted average price. So the, the VWAP is one that I would definitely recommend getting onto your chart. And actually down here, you can see the time frames. So the interval, you have a one minute time frame, five minute time frame, 30 minute. And that just means the time frame that we're tracking. So the most traditional one is going to be the daily, meaning each one of these candlesticks represents one entire day's worth of data. Uh, but if you wanted to go and look at, you know, what's happening within a day itself, then you could click on the five minute. And now each one of these represents five minutes. So each candlestick represents five minutes in and of itself. And there's something old that I'll get rid of for now. Uh, so that's how that works. And that's where you find those uh, time frames, time intervals down at that area. But back to uh, the, the indicators. So we've added in our VWAP. Another one that I would add in are definitely moving averages. So all I did was I clicked on MA for moving average and then it automatically threw it on here. But for that, let's actually go here and, whoops, I don't think I clicked on it. There we go. And now instead of deleting the MA or hiding it, let's actually click on the settings. And you can see right here that I would recommend like I said, the first one that I like to use and I've always used is the 50 period moving average. So came over here, change it to 50. Then if you come over here to style, you can change it to whatever color you want. And I always like to use purple for my 50. So I'm gonna come over here to purple, click okay, click done. And you can see just like that, we now have a purple 50 period moving average. But let's add in another one. So we'll click on, whoops. There we go. So we'll, we got to add settings there because there's a bunch of them. So here you can see that they offer several of them. So let's come over here now and click on 200. Style for the 200 we want to make. I always like to use pink. So there we go. Uh, that's, there we go. That's I. Eh, there we go. I like that version of pink. Okay. And then you're also going to want to click right there, which is going to put it onto the chart itself. So done, and there we go. So now you have the 50 period moving average, you have the 200 period moving average. And those would be the main indicators that I would say to put on your chart. Candlesticks, volume, the VWAP, 50 period moving average, and 200 period moving average. Now what about annotations? If you wanna start to draw some things on the chart, then over here, right there, drawings, click on that. And you can see over here, it opens up more different, uh, so you, more different tools. So right here, you click on this and then it opens it up to trend line, horizontal line, vertical. You can read right here. You click on that and it's got different, different, uh, you know, shapes. So if I want to use a rectangle and just for whatever reason, I find this area of the chart, uh, you know, important. There you go. I've just drawn that right on there. So I'll click on that if I, you want to get rid of something. So click on it and bring over here and you can see the delete. Click that and it's gone. Over here, you have all your Fibonacci's. And then right here, if you want to leave a note, so, uh, you know, you can do that. I like this chart. So click on save and then there you go. You can move that to wherever you want it to be. Uh, you know, if you like this chart, uh, you know, right now I'll just put it right there because you know, the price is coming down, then you could do that. But again, if you wanna get rid of it, if you wanna, you know, edit the text or what have you, just get rid of it right there. And you know, for the rest of these, you get the idea. You just scroll over each of these and that'll, ex you know, show you how, how to, you know, manage the chart from an annotation standpoint. But it's really as straightforward as that. Now, if you want to change, come up here and let's just say, for example, we want to look at uh, Apple's chart. So AAPL, you can see that it populates, clicks on that, and there you go. So we're now looking at Apple, five minutes, but if we want to Apple, uh, look at the Apple on the daily, we would come down here, click on daily, and now we're looking at the daily time frame here on Apple. So there's a variety of, let's go back to the 30 minute, there's a variety of uh, you know ways you can look at things here from these, uh, you know, from the from the different angles of time frames, and then you know what sort of indicators you want to use. And maybe you're thinking, "Geez, I see lines all over the place here. This is too much." And I completely respect that. So again, if you want to just get rid of these, let's say you're not. Let's get the VWAP out of here for now. Again, right click on the VWAP, come up there, 
and there you go, it's deleted. And now maybe you're thinking, okay, this looks a little bit better because you don't want to overwhelm yourself with too many different indicators, but you also don't want to be completely blind. You want to make sure that you have ample data, but it's a fine line and that's why experimenting is important because you got to figure out just how much is good enough for you. But if you start off with these indicators, then that'll give you a good uh, jump start. But as far as setting things up, it's really that straightforward and they make it nice that uh, candle six and volume is already a default so you don't even need to worry about that and then from there it's just you know kind of fooling around dragging your cursor across these different areas and uh, you know then just clicking and seeing what happens with it and then one final note, note Webull does also offer uh, simulator trading, demo trading, paper trading. I mean, a lot of people use those words interchangeable, but it just means practice trading. So what, that's a nice thing is you can practice with these charts before you ever put any of your real money on the line, which gives it another nice benefit. So not only can you, you know, experiment as you get things set up, but then as you start to actually use it and make decisions with it, you can do so in a simulated environment, which is not going to cost you any sort of real money. So that's just another good benefit of what I would say is using Webull platform and the charts that it gives you the ability to practice in a risk-free environment where you're not going to actually lose any money. So I hope this helps. If you would like for me to go over any sort of other platforms and walk you through how to set them up, please let me know in the comment section. Uh, I will always read those and consider them. So I hope this helps. But yeah, get out there, consider using Webull. And if you do want to take advantage of what they're offering, I'll put a link down below that is an affiliate link. So uh, I will get something too if you use uh, click on it. But like I said, if you use the link, you'll also get something with whatever promotion they're currently running. So I hope this helps. First off, thanks so much for watching the entire video. Real quick, before you go, I wanna invite you to a live webinar, web class, training, workshop, online event, whatever you wanna call it, but it will be me live revealing to you what I discovered that has allowed me to transform myself from being an employee to being my own boss, including how I had only one losing day out of 73 days in total. I'm going to cover three keys that have helped me unlock profitable consistency within the markets. The first key is super weird, but in a productive type of way. The second key is super awesome because it quite literally is wired into our DNA as humans, making it very easy to use. But in a cruel way, this becomes a pitfall for many traders. I'll explain it all though, including how to avoid the pitfall that it creates for some. And yeah, the third key, when you hear it, sounds way too good, way too, good to be true, but it's not, and I'll show you how it all works. Then at the end, I open it up for a question and answer session that is, again, totally live. Even if you can't make the live session, please still sign up as it will be recorded, and you can go back and watch the replay that I will send you. Click the image on the screen or click the link down in the description box so you can get the date and time and claim your spot, which I should note is limited due to the fact that this truly is a live event. If you have any questions, let me know. If not, I'll be seeing you soon.